adventures of Biggles. After the excitement of the last few weeks, Biggles and his air police find life extremely dull back in England. They perform their routine duties at Scotland Yard and their private aerodrome cheerfully enough, but each of them secretly longs for an assignment that will bring adventure and action again. As usual, Assistant Commissioner Raymond provides exactly the job they want. He calls unannounced at Biggles' office at the aerodrome and tells his inspector that the air police will be going to Jamaica to investigate a mysterious dead man and the presence of Eric von Stahlheim. So we run into von Stahlheim again. Huh. Strange how our paths cross so frequently. Not really. You're in the same line of business, aren't you? Well, I wouldn't say that. Oh, on different sides, perhaps. But <laughs> you both seek adventure, and you're willing to travel to the ends of the earth to find it. Unfortunately, the adventure von Stahlheim likes is usually the wrong kind. It's because he's unscrupulous, and partly, too, because of his unreasoning hatred of England. The ideals you fight for are directly opposed to his. No wonder you meet so frequently and then clash so violently. I suppose so. All right, far ahead. What's the gem? It concerns another former Nazi, the man who has many years, was many years ago, associated with von Stahlhein in the German intelligence service. Do you recall the name Werner Wolf? Only vaguely. And it'd be years ago I heard it. Before the war, he left intelligence and took up politics. He was one of Hitler's liaison officers with the big German industrial concerns, particularly those making naval armaments. He made a great deal of money by farming out contracts for war material. That lot of use that would have been to him when the war finished. Don't you believe it? He was shrewd enough to transfer most of his money and assets to the United States. When the scrap folded up, our people tried to find him to bring him to trial as a war criminal. But he'd vanished, and his money with him. And now you found him dead in Jamaica, is that it? Yes, but um, don't run ahead of me. Eight years ago, he turned up at Kingston, the capital of Jamaica, in a small yacht named the Viga. He uh, sailed it uh, single-handed across the Atlantic. That was his story. Oh, I'd say that part of it was true enough. It had been done quite often. But his story was that he'd come from Norway. In fact, for eight years, he'd passed himself off as a respectable Norwegian gentleman called Christian Hagen. No one suspected him in all that time? Why should they? He lived very quietly. He bought an old property called Rumkeg Haven. Rumkeg Haven. <laughs> Fascinating name. <laughs> Picturesque place, Jamaica. The name of the bay facing Rumkeg Anchorage is Tews Anchorage. It's supposed to have been the hideout of a famous old pirate days gone by. And now there's a new pirate on the scene, von Stahlheim. Now you're jumping ahead of me again. We haven't finished with Volk yet, or Hagen, as he was known. How did he die? Quite naturally. It was thrombosis. An old Negro servant found him dead at his writing desk and called the doctor. The doctor had no suspicions about Hagen, but as there were money and valuables in the house, he notified the police so that they could uh, find the next kin. Instead, they found his connection with Hitler. Precisely. Mm. In Hagen's safe was a personal letter of commendation from Adolf and a signed photograph. Naturally, these were addressed to Werner Wolf, not Christian Hagen. So the police called in MI5. They made some investigations, and then Major Charles suggested the job be handed over to you. I can't see anything in my line. Except von Stahlheim, of course. By the way, where does he fit in? Well, we're vague. Hagen, as a dead war criminal, doesn't interest us much at all. But when MI5 made inquiries, they discovered that he'd been in possession of plans of the latest German secret weapons in use at the end of the war, and blueprints of others which were still in the experimental stage. Shades of the old V-bombs, eh? V-1, V-2, V-3, and so forth. Up to V-18. When Hagen escaped from Germany, he took with him all the blueprints he could lay his hands on. We suspect that some of them contain secrets which every country in the world would give anything to know. It's beginning to fall into shape. I understand now why Eric von Stahlheim's interested. Most probably as the agent of some European power. He knew Hagen or Wolf, so he'd be the ideal person to drag these papers from him. Well, that seems to explain Eric clearly enough. But what about me? Does England want those papers too? Most assuredly. Not particularly for herself, but to stop them falling into the hands of any other power. As you've probably gathered, the papers are missing. Major Charles and I feel that you and your men may be able to find them and bring them back here to safety. Providing von Stahlheim hasn't had them. I don't think he has. We had information yesterday that he was still in Kingston. He wouldn't stay on if he'd finished his work. But darn things must be well hidden if he's missed them. Is there anything to suggest where they may be? 
Uh, we've a little more information that may help you. First, this letter. It was found on Hagen's desk. Apparently he'd been writing it when he died. Dear Eric. Von Stahlheim? I should say so. There was an envelope addressed to Herr Ernst Stalling, Hotel Prince Karl, Zindenplatzer, Berlin. Friend Eric's last known address. Stahlheim, Stalling. Not much difference, is there? The letter was for Van Stahlheim. We're convinced of that. Dear Eric, it is some time since I wrote to you, but I have not forgotten the promise I once made that should difficulties arise here, I would pass to you certain information, knowing that you would use it to the best advantage. You will understand to what I am referring. The time is... will be sudden. This, therefore, may well be my last letter. The papers, etc., are safe and in... Hmm. That's all there is in the letter, blokes. Apparently, he died at that moment. And that letter's the only clue Raymond passed on to you? No, Algie. There are a few more odds and ends. This sketch map was also found on Hagen's desk. He obviously intended to include it in the letter. You better have a squint at it. Hmm. Well, it tells me precisely nothing, old bean. An outline that looks remarkably like a pear, with a square dot off one end. Before we're through, it may prove to be the key to the whole situation. Oh, doubtless. Providing we find something that looks like a pear and has a square dot off one end. It's far too early yet to judge the few clues we have. But the Jamaican police had worked on it so far, and we take over from there. Hmm. We have to find those blueprints and so forth before von Stahlheim does. Is that the idea? That's it, LJ. We'll have to move fast if we are to beat a smart operator like Eric. Oh, with a start his head, we'll be darn lucky to beat him. I don't know about that, Ginge. Hagen's house has had a garden ever since he died, and I've no doubt most of the clues to the mystery will be found in that house. When we take possession of it, we'll have a lead on von Stahlheim. Well, it se still seems a tough assignment to me. Who cares, old sausage? It's a very assignment. Besides which, dear old Harriet has always longed to revel in the sunshine and tropical nonsense of Jamaica. Harriet, old darling, sound the clarion call. Starley and Jamaica, stand by to receive. We're coming over. Yes, I'm uh, Colonel Summers. I'm Bigglesworth, sir. Air Police, Scotland Yard. Oh, sit down, Inspector, sit down. Thank you. I was notified that you'd be coming over. Thought you'd be here before this. Scotland Yard, you know, reputation for efficiency. We had to equip a plane for the trip. That took a day or two. However, you're naturally my first call, sir. As Chief of Police here in Kingston, I'll be working in with you. Of course. Be glad to help you in any way possible. Although, candidly, I think MI5 uh, built something out of nothing. Can't see any reason why Scotland Yard should be involved. Oh, perhaps not. But investigations never do any harm, do they? No, oh, no, I suppose not. All right, Inspector, I'll give you the keys of Hagen's house and then leave the matter in your hands. Call on me, of course, if you need any police assistance. I'll call on that now, if I may. Oh? I'd like some information. First, about Hagen. I thought you were thoroughly briefed in London. I was, but it's local colour I want. Secondly, I'd like to know all you can tell me about a certain salesman for Rhenish wines who's recently arrived in Kingston. You may know him as Ernst Starling. I'll stick to his real name, Eric von Stahlheim. Starling? Oh, yes, we've given him a thorough check. Seems genuine enough. Spends most of his time at the swimming pool. Only thing wrong with him is that some of the locals he mixes with uh, could be better types. Oh, this is the life for a Lizzie. Absolutely no doubt about that. A lovely, lovely sun, a snorter of a swimming pool, a band playing calypso music, nothing to do till Biggles gets back from the coppers. And von Starlein sitting over there by the pool. Huh? What's that? Where? On the far side of the crowd. He's wearing a bathrobe. Oh, yes, I see it. You couldn't mistake that long cigarette holder, could you? Or that ridiculous monocle. Hey, hey, no harsh words about the monocle, old sausage. That's the only good thing about old Starley. He's been swimming, apparently. He looks as if he's settled there for the rest of the day. 
Yes, by Jove, he does look pretty calm, doesn't he? What are you blokes so interested in? That blonde over there? Hello, Biggles. Didn't see you coming. Yes, as a matter of fact, old sausage, there's a certain brunette that's caught our eye. Very nifty, too. Have a gander at that table on the other side of the crowd. A brunette wearing a monocle and smoking through a long cigarette hold. On Stahlheim, huh? I was told he spent most of his time here. Come on, let's hop out to the car while Stahlheim's busy. I'm keen to have a look at Hagen's house. <laughs> Luscious-looking place, what? Uh, too overgrown for my liking. Might be snakes about. It's a comfortable old house, though. Hagen obviously wasn't hard up. Biggles, the door's ajar. Haven't you got the keys? Yes, but there's a caretaker here. Nothing suspicious about the door. Now, oh, I wonder where we'll find him. Oh, Caesar's ghost! Not Caesar's, old trout. The caretaker's possibly, but definitely not Caesar's. Lazy blighter, he's asleep in his chair. Haven't you noticed the cigarette smoking on the floor, old sausage? And the way his mouth's blotting open, that dusky customer isn't asleep, old bean. He's dead. Is the caretaker really dead? Who has done this? Be sure you hear the development of this thrilling new story in the next chapter of The Air Adventures of Biggles. Biggles.